Hi guys, this is Dr. Neil Malden from the Western Veterinary Cancer Center, part of the Western Veterinary Specialist and Emergency Center located in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, I put up a video uh, dealing with some very basic cancer terms that you may deal with. Uh, and I've had a couple of requests to perhaps break that down into more manageable chunks. So what I've done is pull out each set of definitions that I talked about in the longer introduction to cancer terminology video and put them in little bite-sized pieces. So watch them each individually, watch the entire thing, and be sure and give us feedback if you found them useful. So if we turn a little bit to talk about some treatment-related concepts, Probably the first one to get over is what is chemotherapy. Um, and chemotherapy is the use of drugs to treat patients with or who are at risk for systemic cancer. And you really should think about chemotherapy as being a total body treatment. Um, the strength of chemotherapy is that it's administered and it can be administered a lot of different ways. There's chemotherapy tablets and injections and, and things like that. Um, but that once administered, it's going to spread throughout the body, and if there's cancer cells hiding in any location, then theoretically, chemotherapy has a chance of dealing with those cancer cells. Uh, now, we know that some parts of the body are harder to treat than others, uh, but as a general rule, you should think about chemotherapy being a total body therapy. Uh, chemotherapy is the primary therapy for tumors that we know are systemic at the time of diagnosis. Uh, the classic example there would be a tumor called lymphoma, which is a lymphatic cancer. It is a very common tumor in both dogs and cats. Uh, and we think of when we, when we are initiating therapy in those patients, the first thing we're going to reach for is a chemotherapy protocol. Now, there are lots of different chemotherapy protocols that are specific for individual types of cancer. Uh, and for tumors such as lymphoma, there are multiple different protocols, even just for that particular tumor. Uh, so really, when you're choosing a protocol, that guidance needs to come uh, based on exactly what tumor type the patient has, uh, what, how much cancer does the patient have, and things like that. And those are probably questions best answered uh, in talking to an oncologist to help guide you along that pathway. Um, we also think about chemotherapy being an adjuvant therapy or, or a prophylactic therapy uh, in patients that are at risk for developing metastasis. Uh, and probably the classic example there is a tumor called osteosarcoma, which is a tumor of giant breed dogs, so Great Danes and Rottweilers and guys like that. Uh, and it's a tumor that usually affects one of the bones of the leg. And uh, that tumor, even with amputation, so we know we've gotten good control of the primary tumor, it's been removed from the body, still about 95% of those patients will go on and develop a tumor spread. Um, primarily to the lungs. So in that setting, we would use chemotherapy as a way to try to prevent or delay the onset of those clinically detectable uh, metastases. Uh, we, if we're going to talk about chemotherapy, we do at least have to touch on toxicity. Uh, and again, we'll spend a whole talk just on veterinary uh, chemotherapy toxicity. But for this talk, let's just say that it's generally well tolerated in veterinary patients although we do have to always consider toxicity when we're treating a patient with chemotherapy. Uh, the two body systems that we're most concerned about are the gastrointestinal tract and the bone marrow. Um, when we think about gastrointestinal toxicity, that would be things like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Uh, absolutely does happen, but it's generally less severe than what we see in human cancer patients, and it tends to be much more manageable. Um, so yes, we do see those things, uh, but all in all, dogs and cats tend to tolerate uh, the gastrointestinal effects of chemo pretty well. Um, we also worry about the bone marrow and what's called hematologic toxicity. And what we mean by that is suppression of the normal cells that, that should be made in the bone marrow. So that can be white blood cells and make you more prone to infection. Uh, that could be platelets, which are a, a component of our clotting cascade. Uh, they help us, you know, help a blood clot form. So if you really suppress the platelets, you could have bleeding issues. And then with long-term chemotherapy administration, we can start to see anemia as well. Uh, most of the hemologic, hematologic side effects of chemotherapy can be dealt with pretty effectively, especially if you're quite diligent in your monitoring and are being sure that you don't have 
um, significant issues that need to be dealt with. And probably a, one final take home point about chemotherapy is that veterinary chemotherapy protocols really are designed to try to strike a balance between quality of life and treatment related issues. Uh, so the goal is to find an effective treatment for the tumor that does not severely impact your patient's quality of life. And the reason we, we choose this route is that we know that veterinary cancer patients don't have a 20 or 25 year chance of survival uh, after they're treated with chemotherapy. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to most veterinary oncologists to look at a patient that may ha maybe has 12, 18 months survival and say, well, I'm gonna make you really sick for nine months of that. So the goal of most veterinary chemotherapy protocols is to, again, treat the tumor, but at the same time, try to preserve and maintain your patient's quality of life all the way through therapy uh, so that you're not really having to, to deal with those kind of really uh, aggressive side effects. Um, you know, it's always a risk to benefit analysis and for each individual patient, there will be things they tolerate and things they don't. Uh, so that you absolutely will sometimes see a patient that just cannot tolerate the protocol that you wanted to use for a particular cancer um, and you have to kind of constantly reassess the risks of treating that patient with the benefits of doing so. But usually we're able to strike a pretty good balance uh, between the, the risks and the benefits. And in most cases, see that the benefits of treating a cancer patient is going to far outweigh the risks.